Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture on resolution. Uh, just a quick recap, in the last lecture we discussed about valid arguments, argument form, when exactly we say an argument form to be valid and so on and we also saw various rules of inferences. The plan for this lecture is as follows, in this lecture we will discuss about resolution which is an important inference rule and based on resolution we will see a proof strategy which is called as resolve proof by resolution refutation. So, to begin with uh, let us try to understand what exactly is the resolution rule. So, it is a very important inference rule and it is used extensively in this programming language called prolog. So, recall I said uh, that prolog is an important programming language which is used in uh, AI applications. So, what exactly is this resolution rule? So, it says the following, imagine you are given two clauses. So, C 1 is a clause and C 2 is another clause and the important property here is that I have a literal L which is present in positive form in C 1 and in negative form in C 2. Okay. So, you can imagine that C 1 is a huge clause consisting of one or more literals, one of the literals is L. So, just to recall a literal is a propositional variable okay, or the constants true and false, true or false or true or false. Okay. So, what I am saying here is that we have two clauses C 1 and C 2. In C 1 we have some literal L and the same literal is available in a negation form in C 2. The remaining portion of C 1 I am denoting it as C 1 prime and the remaining portion of C 2 I am denoting it as C 2 prime. So, you have two such clauses and what this resolution rule says is the following. It says that if it is given that the clause C 1 and C 2 are true, then based on the truth of these two clauses we can conclude the we can conclude the conclusion C 1 prime disjunction C 2 prime. So, in some sense you can imagine that resolution rule is nothing like is something equivalent to uh, cancellation rule. Okay. That means, you can cancel out the literal L if it is available in positive form in C 1 and negative form in C 2 and whatever is left in C 1 and C 2 you take the disjunction of that that, that, that will be the conclusion of C 1 and C 2. So, in some, some way you are actually simplifying your clause C 1 and C 2. So, in argument form uh, the resolution rule can be stated as follows. So, this is the argument form of uh, resolution inference rule. It says that if you are given the clauses C 1 and C 2 where C 1 is C 1 prime disjunction L and C 2 is C 2 prime disjunction negation of L then based on these two premises you can conclude the conclusion C 1 prime disjunction C 2 prime. I stress that to apply the resolution rule you need C 1 and C 2 to be clauses. That means, C 1 and C 2 have to be proposition uh, have to be compound propositions which are available in the form of clause. It should not be available in a different form. Okay. So, the conclusion that we can draw from the resolution rule namely the disjunction of C 1 prime and C 2 prime is also called as the resolvent of the clauses C 1 and C 2. That means, after resolving the clause C 1 and C 2 we are getting the resolvent C 1 prime disjunction C 2 prime. Okay. And remember uh, as for our definition of argument form since we are saying that our resolution is a valid argument form and the definition of valid argument form is that conjunction of premises right conjunction of premises implies conclusion should be a tautology right should be a tautology that was our definition of a valid argument. So, since we are saying that uh, resolution as a valid inference rule we will prove that assume for the moment resolution is a valid inference rule it means that we can say that the conjunction of clause C 1 and C 2 
where C 1 and C 2 have the common literal L available in positive as well as in negative form in C 1 and C 2 respectively implies the disjunction of C 1 prime and C 2 prime is a tautology. It will always be a true statement. We will prove that very soon. So, that is a resolution rule. Okay. So, now we want to prove that indeed the resolution is a uh, indeed the resolution inference rule that we are stating here is a valid argument form. So, what we have to prove is we want to prove this statement that indeed this implication is a tautology. So, for that we assume that the left hand side of this implication namely the conjunction of C, C 1 and C 2 is true. Why we are assuming it to be true? Because remember we want to show that this implication is a tautology and this implication is true for all other cases. Remember the truth table of implication is false implies false is true, false uh, sorry false implies false is true, false implies true is true and in the same way true implies true is true. So, for these three cases by default this implication is always a true statement. We have to consider the fourth case when your left hand side is true, the left hand side of this implication and true is true and we have to show in that case the right hand side of the implication is also true. That will prove that this implication is indeed a tautology. So, that is why I am assuming here that the left hand side of your implication is true. right? So, now I can split my proof into two cases depending upon whether my literal L which is available in positive form in negative and negative form in C 1 and C 2 respectively is true or not. So, if L is true since I am assuming that this whole conjunction is a true statement right? and since L is true that means, uh, this portion here this portion of your left hand side since I am assuming it to be true this has to be true right the disjunction of C 2 prime and negation of L has to be true because then only the overall conjunction can be true. But since I am assuming L to be true negation of L will be false and if negation of L is false then in order that is the overall C 2 should be true I require that C 2 prime should be true and if C 2 prime is true then you take the disjunction of C 2 prime with anything say with C 1 prime the overall disjunction will always be true. So, that proves that this implication is a tautology for case 1 that means if you assume your left hand side is true of this implication and if L is true then I draw the conclusion that even RHS is also true. Now, take the second case when L is false. right? So, these are the two possible cases with respect to the literal L it can be either true or it can be either false. So, if your literal L is false then I focus on C 1 this is your whole C 1 right? and since I am assuming that this overall conjunction is true this overall conjunction will be true only if the individual clauses here are true. But if I focus on the clause C 1 I am assuming case 2 where L is false then in order that C 1 is true C 1 prime has to be definitely true because if C 1 prime is also false and if L is also false your C 1 can never be true but I am assuming that my left hand side is true. So, now if C 1 prime is true I take the disjunction of C 1 prime with anything the overall disjunction will be true. So, that proves that even for case 2 my RHS is true. Right. And that proves that this implication that I have stated here is indeed a tautology and since it is a tautology as per my definition of valid argument form I can say that resolution is indeed a valid inference rule or a valid it has a valid argument form and hence the corresponding inference rule is indeed valid. Okay. Resolution is a valid argument form. Okay. So, we have seen already uh, how to find or how to resolve a pair of clauses. Now, next we want to see how exactly we resolve a set of clauses where we, have, where we may have more than two clauses. So, imagine you are given a set of n clauses and I would be interested to resolve this resolve the clauses in this set. Uh, which is often called as a resolvent of the set of clauses. So, the idea remains the same um, that means, we will keep on finding two clauses from this collection and keep on resolving them and we stop till we cannot proceed further. 
So, basically we build what we call as a resolution tree and in the resolution tree we can keep the n clauses that are given in my set S at the root level. That means by default we can imagine that the clauses C1, C2, Cn each of them belongs to the resolvent of my set of clauses S because I can always conclude C1, I can always conclude C2, I can always conclude Cn from my set of clauses in S. Now, next what I have to do is the following, I have to resolve a pair of existing clauses which are already there in my tree and whatever is the resolvent I obtain by resolving the pair of clauses which I have resolved that will be treated as a new clause which will be again added to my tree. And then I go to this step and again pick two clauses which I can resolve, I find their resolvent and again I add them to the resolution tree. And I stop this process when I cannot find any more clauses which can be resolved. At that step I stop, okay. that is how I can find a resolvent for a set of clauses. Okay. I stress here that there is no restriction at each step regarding the choice of the clauses which you can pick for resolving in what order you have to resolve the clauses and so on. As as long as you are picking two clauses which can be resolved and adding the resolvent to the tree, you, you are fine. Okay. So, let me give you an example to show how exactly we compute the resolution of a set of clauses. So, imagine you are given here uh, compound propositions P implies Q, R implies S, P and R. So, the first step will be that I will be converting this compound propositions into their corresponding clause form because as, as of now P implies Q is not in its clause form, but by applying the rules of logical equivalence I can convert P implies Q into negation P disjunction Q and so on. So, now I obtain clauses C1, C2, C3, C4 and this will be my set S. Right. So, now here is how I can build my resolution tree at the root I can pick I, I can keep all the clauses that are there currently in my set S and now I keep on picking clauses pair of clauses which I can resolve. So, for instance I can resolve these two clauses by cancelling P and negation P and the resolvent will be Q which will be now added to the tree. Next I can resolve R from these two clauses and the resolvent will be S and now you can see that I can no longer find a pair of clauses which can be resolved further and I stop here and hence I will say that the resolvent of the set of clauses consists of the conjunction of clause Q and the conjunction of the clauses. So, that is how we actually build the resolution of a set of clauses. Now, I will be discussing two key properties regarding the resolution of a set of clauses based on which we will see a very nice proof strategy which we call as proof by resolution refutation. So, the first property here is the following, imagine you are given a set of n clauses. Now, the claim here is that the empty clause or the constant false okay, or the false statement you can imagine, you can call it by very, you can interpret it in different manner. So, this is the constant false which is also called, uh, which is also denoted by the notation phi in some text. In fact, I will be interchangeably using uh, the constant f as well as phi to for denoting the false statement or the false constant. So, the claim here is that a constant false will belong to the resolvent of set of these clauses if and only if is the set of clauses in S is unsatisfiable. What does that mean? That means that if the conjunction of the n clauses is always false, that is what it means by saying that, that is what it means when I say that the set of clauses in S is unsatisfiable. If the set of clauses in S is unsatisfiable, that means no truth assignment of the clauses C1 to Cn can satisfy it, make it true, right. That means it is always false. So, the statement here is that if the set of clauses in S is unsatisfiable, then when you build the resolution tree 
for resolving the set of clauses in S, you will see that the constant f appears in the tree. Okay. So, due to interest of time I am not going to give you the proof for this, but you can easily verify that this is indeed true and in fact later on we will demonstrate uh, this statement with an example. Now, based on this statement I can prove another statement which states the following. So, here you are given again a set of clauses C 1 to C n and suppose C is another clause. Now, the statement says that the clause C belongs to the resolvent of the set of clauses in S if and only if the set of clauses in S along with the clause negation C is unsatisfiable. So, this union here means that I am adding the clause negation C to the set of clauses in S. That means, I am basically taking the conjunction of the existing clauses in the set S and the clause negation C. So, the statement says here that the clause C will belong to the resolvent of S. That means, if I build a resolvent resolution tree for the set of clauses in S, I will see a node with label C and a statement says that this is possible if and only if the conjunction of the clauses in S along with negation C is false. And by the previous statement, I know that a resolvent, uh, sorry, I know that a set of clauses is unsatisfiable if and only if the constant false belongs to the resolvent of the set of clauses. So, when can it be possible? So, now my set S is modified to C 1 to C n and along with that negation C. So, when can I say that the set S consisting of the n clauses along with negation of C is unsatisfiable? Well, that is that will be unsatisfiable if and only if the resolvent of C 1, C 2, C n and negation of C gives me constant false. That means, I can say that the constant false belongs to the resolution of resolvent of the set of n clauses along with negation C. So, that is the second statement. Okay. So, based on these two properties I can uh, next discuss what we call as proof by resolution refutation. So, in the proof by resolution refutation the goal is the following. You are given an argument form and you have to verify whether this argument form is valid or invalid. Namely, I have to check whether the conjunction of premises implies conclusion is true or not okay. or equivalently whether Q can be concluded logically from the conjunction of my premises. Now, the first thing that I do in the proof by resolution refutation is I convert my, the, I convert my premises as well as conclusion into its equivalent clausal form, because the premises P 1, P 2, P m may not be available in clausal form. So, I have to convert them into the clausal form. In the same way my conclusion also need not be available in the clausal form. So, I convert it into its clausal form and now my goal is to verify whether the equivalent argument form where everything is in the form of clauses is valid or not. Namely, I have to check whether C belongs to the resolvent of this set of clauses. So, this is my set S. I want to check whether I can conclude C from this set of clauses in S which is equivalent to saying whether I, I, I want to check whether the clause C belongs to the resolvent of the set of clauses. And for that as per this property I have to check whether the conjunction of my premises along with the negation of the conclusion is unsatisfiable or not. 
and that will be unsatisfiable only if the resolvent of my premises along with the negation of the conclusion is empty or not. Actually, it is not, not exactly equivalent to checking whether it, the resolvent is empty or not, it is actually check equivalent to checking whether phi belongs to the resolvent of this or not, because the resolvent of this set of clauses may consist of many clauses. Among those clauses, I have to check whether one of the clauses is empty clause or not. If that is the case, then it will show that this collection of clauses is unsatisfiable, which will show that this argument form is an equivalent uh, is a valid argument form. So, let me demonstrate it with an example that will make it things clear. So, I am given a bunch of uh, premises, you are given premise number 1, 2, this is your 1, 2, 3 and 4 premises and this is your conclusion. And I want to verify whether this is a valid argument form using proof by resolution reputation method. The first thing I will do is I will convert each of these English statements into an abstract argument form where everything will be in terms of propositional variables. So, for doing that I will initiate I will introduce propositional variables to represent various statements. So, let P denote the statement today is Friday and Q denote the statement I will go to a movie. If that is the case then the first premise can be represented by P implies Q because this is a statement of the form if then. Okay. Then let R denote the statement today is bright and S denote the statement I will go outside. Then the second premise can be represented by R implies S. I have already introduced the variable P for denoting the statement that today is Friday. So, the third premise is P. I have already introduced a variable R to denote the statement today is bright. So, the fourth premise will be R and what is the conclusion I am trying to do? Well, I am trying to do the conclusion the conjunction disjunction of Q and S. So, I have to verify whether this argument form is valid or not. Well, you can use truth table method or you can keep on applying modest spawn and, and simplification rule and so on to verify whether this argument form is valid or not. But the goal of this exercise is we will show that how this argument form is valid or not, how we can check that using the resolution refutation method. So, the first thing that we have to do is we have to convert the premises as well as the conclusion everything in the form of equivalent clauses. Right. So, P implies Q is not in the form of clause. So, we have to convert P implies Q into its clause form and I can rewrite P implies Q in the form negation P or Q. By the way, if you are wondering how we are converting statements into its equivalent clause form, that is nothing but converting statements into its conjunctive normal form. If you have the conjunctive normal form equivalent of the original statement, that is nothing but the clause form of your original statement. Okay. So, if I convert P implies Q into conjunctive normal form, I get negation P or Q, R implies S is equivalent to negation R or S, P is anyhow in its conjunctive normal form, R is anyhow in its conjunctive normal form and my conclusion is already in its CNF. So, that is the equivalent clause form. Now, I have to verify whether this is a valid argument form or not and the proof by resolution refutation says the following you take the premises that is your set of clause S and you up, you add the negation of the conclusion to that. Okay. And what will be the negation of the conclusion? The negation of the conclusion will be negation of Q disjunction S. I can apply the De Morgan's law and take negation Q, uh, take the negation inside and these are the two clauses corresponding to my conclusion. Okay, which I am adding to my tree resolution tree. And now I have to, so uh, the four clauses was your set S and these two clauses corresponds to your negation of conclusion. And now I have to find a resolution of this set of clauses S union negation C and check whether I get the conclusion false or not. Again I can pick any pair of clause and keep on resolving. So, what I do is I choose clause number C 1 and C 3 to resolve because P is available in positive and negative form, I can cancel out right. 
and the resolvent of C 1 and C 3 will be Q. Then let Q be the clause which I pick and negation of Q is the second clause which I am choosing here and I can cancel them and I obtain false because if you take Q and negation Q and cancel out you are left with nothing and that is a false conclusion. Okay. Since I have obtained a false conclusion that means this clausal form this, this argument form in its clausal form is indeed valid. Remember you might be wondering here that I have not chosen C 2 and uh, R and negation of S in my resolution process that is not necessary. When I am constructing the when I am trying to when I am doing the resolution refutation proof my goal is to arrive at the false conclusion as soon as possible it is for that it is not necessary to touch upon each and individual clauses in my tree. It might be possible that just by using two clauses at the first place I can arrive at the conclusion false that will complete the process I need not have to touch upon the other clauses that is not necessary. Okay. So, in this particular case just by resolving C 1 and negation Q uh, C 1 and C 3 I can come to the conclusion Q and then by resolving Q and negation Q I can come to the conclusion uh, for. Well, you can do the proof other way around as well in the sense that you can do the proof differently as well that means instead of uh, say resolving C 1 and C 3 first you, you can do the following as well you can uh, resolve this C 2 and negation of S you can cancel out and you can come to the uh, conclusion negation of R. And then you can choose this R and negation of R also to derive at the false conclusion that is another resolution refutation proof. So, there can be multiple resolution refutation proof for proving the validity of the same argument. You just have to come to the conclusion phi if at all it is possible. Well, if you cannot come to the conclusion phi even after repeatedly applying or resolving pair of clauses that shows your argument form is not valid. Okay. So, in this case the argument form is valid the clausal form of the argument form is valid that shows that the original argument form is also valid. Okay. So, that brings me to the end of this lecture the references used for today's lecture are uh, the chapters by in the uh, Rosen's book and just to summarize uh, in this lecture we have introduced the resolution reputation proof strategy which is based on the resolution inference rule. Uh, the resolution inference rule can be considered as an equivalent form of proof by cancellation where you pick two clauses where you have a literal available in positive form in one of the clauses and negative form in other clause. You can cancel both literals and whatever is left in do, to both the clauses the conjunction of that you can consider as the uh, resolvent or the conclusion of the two clauses which you have simplified. This is a very powerful proof mechanism which is a very extensively used in programming language called Prolog. Thank you.